Hello and welcome to this bite-sized economics video on indirect taxes and subsidies. So first off, what is an indirect tax? Well, it's a tax levied on expenditure of goods or services, as opposed to a direct tax, which is just a tax charged directly to an individual based on a component of income. So indirect tax is just levied on expenditure. So you need to know the impacts on consumers, producers and the government. Well, for consumers, what's going to happen is they're just going to be charged an even greater amount, which may influence whether or not they buy the good. Because what's happening is it's increasing the opportunity cost of buying the good. And this is when price elasticity of demand comes into play. So it depends whether it's an inelastic good or an elastic good for how much a consumer wants to buy it. So for example, if you found out that the new iPhone is gonna cost 100 quid more, it's gonna make you think more because the opportunity cost of what you could then do with that 100 quid is different. So then the impact on producers is, it's gonna cost more to supply the good because the tax is gonna increase their supply. So if um, we've got quite an elastic demand for a good, so say the demand for iPhones is very elastic, which means if it changes, the price changes at all, supply is going to, you know, the demand is going to drop down to zero. So that means that if they then got tax, it's going to be the producer who has to lose the profit margin because if they do change the price as a result of the tax, then they're going to have no demand. So it costs more to supply the good, which low, which can lower their profit margin. And willingness to supply the good and for the government well it's good for them because they're going to earn more and more money in tax revenues from the taxes so you need to know what this word incidence of tax is well the incidence of tax is the way in which the burden of paying a sales tax is divided between buyers and sellers although the seller produce well the producer might be responsible for the mechanics of pay for the mechanics of paying the tax, part of the tax is effectively passed on to the buyer in the form of a higher price. And this is what I was saying about the price elasticity of demand determines the incidence of a tax. For example, if the demand were perfectly inelastic, then the seller inelastic means um, that even if it's really high price, buyers don't mind at all, they're just going to buy it whatever the price. Then the sellers can pass on the whole burden of the tax onto the consumers, though through an increase in price equal to the value of the tax however if you've got the demand where it's perfectly elastic then sellers aren't going to be able to raise price at all so they're going to have to burden the they're going to have to bear the entire burden of the tax and so that's taxes covered and now we're just going to look at subsidies quickly so right what is a subsidy well it's a grant given by the government to producers to encourage the production of a good or service so it's when the government gives a firm money so that they can try and increase the output so because the price falls by less than the amount of the subsidy the benefits of the subsidy are shared between buyers and sellers depending on the elasticity of demand so if the aim of the subsidy is to increase production, it is only partially successful. The degree of success all determined, is all determined by the price elasticity of demand. So going back to what we're saying here, if we've got inelastic demand, meaning that suppliers are willing to pay whatever. So for example, pretend everyone just loves apples and they're going to buy them whether they're 50p or a pound. And the government wants to try and increase the amount of apples that people are eating they might say to apple suppliers right okay we're going to give you a subsidy which means that you can lower your price down from 70p down from 50p but if people if the consumers are still willing to pay 70p then there's no point in the um in the firm lowering the price down to 50p which means that they might still supply at 70p and actually just increase their profit margin so that's why it all depends on the price elasticity of demand and whether the good is inelastic or or elastic so subsidies are very good because they can increase the employment rate by making workers more skilled through apprenticeships schemes and lowering the cost of employing workers and if you look at a macroeconomic video or macro macroeconomic view then this is very good because obviously increasing employers is going to have a positive multiplier effect but if you are writing about that in your microeconomic exam, it's important you don't go too much into the positive multiply because that is a macroeconomic point and might actually hinder your grade. 
So subsidies can also help control inflation because they keep the cost of production low. So if your government's aim is to lower inflation, then these subsidies can make sure that the price level does not increase too much. So it keeps it nice and low. And they could, or right, so that's another um, good point. And sorry, just pr- progressive subsidy means it reduces inequality. And a progressive means that the higher the cost, the higher the amount um given so it basically just means that for uh the poorer people in society it's going to benefit them a lot more whereas for the upper class it's they're not going to receive as much in the subsidy so that's why it's good reduces inequality however there are bad points to subsidies so for example they uh, oh sorry there could be government failure And this is because if the government provides an inefficient subsidy, it can distort the market price. So this is bad because um, means that free markets or just markets in general, they're not going to allow the pricing mechanism to distribute the resources, which might lead to an inefficient allocation of resources, which is the whole point of economics, actually, is the economic problem is allocating resources efficiently. So that's why it's bad is we can't do that and also provides an opportunity cost so if the government decides to subsidize say the cow market it's like well why aren't why are you going to give loads of money to farmers to get milk when we can be spending money on subsidizing education to provide a better work for a better so it's always coming in to this point of opportunity cost and opportunity cost is such a great evaluation point in economics because it's necessary all the time and just lastly, government revenue could be, and um, sorry, this is just linking to this, is government revenue could be spent elsewhere. So opportunity cost of the subsidy is definitely something that needs to be considered. And you just need to be aware of what it looks like on a graph. So here we have it. So this is the subsidy payment. So this is going to be the supply before they can't supply that much as you can see here and then after the subsidy it's cheaper for the um, firms to produce so they're able to supply more of the good so they can increase output and as you can see this is going to move demand from this previous point here previous market equilibrium point b this new equilibrium point over here which is point d and that's why it's good and this is the subsidy payment so the supplier is going to receive this price that's where it's um being sold at is this price c but the supplier is still going to receive this higher point up here the pre-subsidy price and this is the existing one so that's it and it is actually quite a difficult concept to get your head around but i promise the more you look at them the more you start analyzing if you read around in textbooks i know cgp's got a very good economics textbook which does um show the distribution of subsidies and taxes very well. So it's worth looking at that. Anyways, I hope you learned a bit more and enjoyed the video. Thanks for listening.